Merry Christmas, ladies and gentlemen, and I almost expected to hate It's That My Santa, but after watching all two episodes of this particular OVA, I was quite disappointed with the results. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. This is my review of the two episode OVA It's That My Santa, which was penned by Ken Akamatsu, the same gentleman who also wrote Love Hina, with the manga originally being published in 1998 by Kodansha. The OVA originally premiered in Japan on December 7th, 2005, and it was licensed by Funimation on December 11th, 2007, and it starred the vocal talents of, on the Japanese side, Jun Kamei, Aya Hirano, Yukari Tamura, Yukobayashi, and Tomo Sakurai, and on the English side, we have Chris Burnett, Brittany Karboski, Allison Victorin, Colleen Klinkenbeard, and Stephanie Young. Now, before I start with this review, I'd like to say that I am not really a fan of Ken Akamatsu. I don't really understand the overall appeal of his most popular work, Love Hina. And while it does have an excellent Seiyu cast, I just don't really see the appeal to it. And what I've noticed about a lot of his manga is that there are times that his female leads tend to be quite abusive and not all the more tasteful in terms of their personality, even though they are the main heroines. But that's not to say I don't like him as a person. I'm sure that in real life, he's a decent guy. But it's just that his works don't really resonate with me, especially Love Hina. And going to Eats That Than My Santa, I've heard a lot of terrible things about this particular OVA, saying that it's a lot worse than Love Hina, and just a lot of horrible things in general. And from what I could tell, this anime just didn't really leave a good taste in my mouth after watching two episodes. But that's not to say it was the worst thing I've ever seen, no. It was just quite disappointing in its execution, which then leads me to my main review. Starting off with the story, It's That The My Santa chronicles the life of our young hero, Santa, who just does not like Christmas, and he is quite the Scrooge in the entire shebang, and he just feels like an unlucky person until this young, chipper, and overly enthusiastic young girl by the name of Mai shows up in his life and tries to improve his life and make him happy. Well, I didn't really care too much of the story because even though I know that Santa is the main focal point of the story and he does seem like the type of person who can move the story along and I can't help but feel sorry for him in some moments, it just doesn't really resonate with me, mostly due to Mai's flagrant annoyance and also the fact that it kind of tends to bounce around into different places without any type of cohesion whatsoever. So I'm not gonna mince words here. The story could have been more polished. It could have been a lot more down to earth, but instead it went the over the top route with a lot of contrivances and just not a lot of things that I'm not really a fan of. And speaking of contrivances, what about that whole magical girl transformation of Mai? I mean, she goes from this plain looking and really girlish young teenager and when she got kissed by Santa, she then transforms into a more buxom young magical girl. Why is that? And there are just some elements of the story I don't really understand and character introductions do tend to be rather sporadic since this is a two episode OVA. It's not just the fact that it's not cohesive enough, but there are just a lot of moments where it tends to be sporadic and there are times that exposition tends to be dumped on throughout the entire story. So the overall story is not satisfactory to my tastes. The animation isn't really anything special. And while the character designs are quite colorful, they just didn't really stand out. It's your typical look in anime and that's just very much it. Though there are times that the corners are cut and there are times that you can see 
that these people have worked on such a limited budget. So the animation just doesn't really stand out for me. The same thing I can say about the music. The incidental music is kind of okay at best. And the J-pop entries are actually okay. And Aya Hirano is a very talented singer and not just an extremely talented voice actress as she sang the two closing numbers. But other than that, it just doesn't really resonate with me. And that's how I also felt about the characters. I mean, we know that Santa is the main protagonist, but he is boring. And even though there are glimpses of sympathy and how the audience feels about him, especially from his tragic past of his parents being gone from his life and constantly moving all around, we just don't really feel for him when everything is said and done. There are times that we want to relate to him, but his personality is nothing really special and he just didn't really resonate with me all throughout. He's a pretty dull male protagonist and even though Mai is a complete foil to Santa's normal everyday nice guy nature, my biggest problem with Mai is that she's not just overly enthusiastic which then leads to her being so tedious. It's just that there are some things that I found rather unpleasant about her. Like she constantly slaps poor Santa and I just can't really seem to root for her because there are times that she was quite annoying and her flagrant whining and screaming just don't really help her that much as a character. She does have spunk, but my goodness, her whining her screaming and her yelling just make her all the more annoying. But when she transforms into her magical girl form, that's when the screaming pretty much stops. But she's really nothing special. She's just the hot chick in her magical girl form with a really good heart. That's just it. Sherry is Mai's rival and friend. And while she is a pretty good foil to Mai, she is quite annoying. It doesn't really help that she does have the tendency to really think that she's all that and think that she's a lot better than Mai, thus making her feel like she's more superior to Mai. And speaking of magical powers, while Mai has the ability to conjure objects that starts with the letter S, Sherry, on the other hand, every time she says gorgeous, those objects turn a lot bigger than anyone else can expect. So while Sherry does have some interesting quirks about her, she's not really that great of a character. With Mai Mai, she does start off as the wiser than her older sister type of tag-along kid, but throughout the rest of the anime, she starts to act a lot more cheery and a lot more happy. Why is that? Where did that all come from? I just didn't really understand. And the teacher, Noel Sensei, not really anything special about her. So yeah, the characters were quite dull, but the only exception has to be Mai, but that is because her characteristics are quite negative because she does tend to be really annoying. She does tend to be such a flagrant whiner and she can be quite unpleasant, which is not really a good thing. Sherry does have some personality as well, but she is also quite unpleasant. And the character development that each of them get is also quite sporadic, which then leads me to scratch my head and to wonder, well, how did this happen? How did they change from point A to point B, even though they didn't really have any type of character to speak of, nor did I even care about them so much. Oh well. But at least the voice acting was marginally okay. You could tell that these voice actors really do put in some effort, but it's not really enough to save what is an otherwise disappointing project. Chris Burnett does have a pretty good voice. It's just that he sounds a little bit too old to play a young teenager, well, something that at least Jun Kame manages to fulfill. Both Aya Hirano and Brittany Karboski are really talented voice actresses. They are also veterans in their craft, but in terms of their performances as Mai, 
they tended to be quite shrill in her normal form, but at least she was a lot better in her magical girl form. So even though both Hirano and Karboski are really, really talented, I just can't help but feel bad for them considering the lines that they have to spout out. Yukobayashi and Allison Victorin have really good voices as Sherry, with Yukobayashi actually being a lot better than Victorin, as Kobayashi manages to give Sherry her snooty, pompous attitude, which she does really well. But with Victorin's case, her delivery is a little bit on the flat side. Though the timbre of her voice is still there, it's just that Victorin's delivery falls kind of flat. Yukari Tamura is actually in her element when it comes to playing these type of kid sisters, and she did a very good job voicing Mai Mai. Pauline Klinkenbeard does a very solid job as well, but I feel like she's kind of forcing her voice to sound as infantile as possible in order to pass off sounding like a very young kid. And both Tomo Sakurai and Stephanie Young do a pretty good job in voicing Noel Sensei, even though the character of Noel Sensei only appears sporadically. But you could definitely tell that these two are also veterans of their craft, as you can hear it in their voices and how they manage to deliver their lines. So overall, Eats That The My Santa is a very disappointing package. It's not the worst thing that I've ever seen, nor is it the best thing I've ever seen. It's just below mediocre, with characters I don't really care for, animation that is really nothing special, and a story that just couldn't really keep everything along. At least the music was kind of decent, though nothing special, and at least the voice towns tried their damnedest given the circumstances. And with that said, I give Eats That The My Santa 1 out of 5. It is a disappointing title, and there may have been a few shining points, mostly in the voice acting department, but everything else kind of falters. Well... That's it for my review of It's That The My Santa, and tune in later when I have something a little bit more worthwhile to look back on. So until then, I hope you all have a happy holidays.